everybody. Welcome to today's edition of Discover with Dole. I'm Julie Burgundy, the Public Education Coordinator here at the Dole Institute of Politics. And if you give me just a second, I'm going to click on the video here. So if you guys have any questions, uh, you can see them in the chat here. And so as I mentioned, we're here at the Dole Institute of Politics. And today our theme is join the campaign. So I want everybody to hop on the campaign train. And here we're gonna be talking about Senator Dole's uh, campaigns and elections uh, and read a book about what it is to campaign and see some things from the archives today. And so let's just do a quick recap about Senator Dole and all the different campaigns that he has run. Uh, and so behind me is an exhibit on the 1960 campaign uh, for the United States House of Representatives. So I got a question for you. In our Congress, the highest uh, legislative branch of the government, and we have the House and the Senate, and they both make up the United States Congress. How long is a term for a United States representative? So the House of Representatives, it's gonna be, uh, some years that I can count on one hand or less. So what do we think? A House member has to run, I mean, gets elected for two years. And if they would like to run again, they have to re-campaign because they get elected every two years. And there's no limit for that at this point. And then what about for Senate? So Senator Bob Dole was in the Senate for quite a while. With his House and his Senate time, he was in Congress for over 35 years. And so he was spent a few years in the House. He spent eight years there. And so if he had to run every two years, how many times did he run for the House of Representatives? Anybody know? I think eight years divided by two is Four. So he campaigns four times. And as I mentioned, this is the 1960 campaign behind me. We'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. And then I mentioned he went on to the Senate and they have a different term uh, length. That's a little bit longer. I may have to use two hands for that one. And it's going to be more than two, less than 10. How about six? So six years is the term for the United States Senator, and they can be elected multiple times as well. Now we have two and six. Is there one in the middle too for four years? Yes, the President of the United States is in office for four years, and they can run again if they choose to get reelected, and so for a total of eight years. However, they have a two-year term limit, and so that uh, is it, but as we said, congressmen and senators can, can keep running. So we have two years, four years, and six years. So Senator Dole ran a lot of campaigns. <laughs> and he also ran for vice presidential candidate along with President Ford in 1976. He also campaigned for President of the United States in 1980, 88, and 96. And Elizabeth uh, is also pretty good at campaigning. She was one of the first women to, or the first woman to campaign for her vice presidential candidate husband in 1976. And of course has campaigned with him in support of him uh, all the way through his years of Congress and also for all those presidential times. And she herself is pretty good at campaigning because she also ran for president of the United States herself in the year 2000. And so now that we, we both learned that they are, have lots of campaign experience and gone through elections, I want to read a book with you to kind of break that down of what it takes to campaign, what it takes for you as a kid to maybe campaign yourself. So today we're gonna to be reading this book here. It's called If I Ran for President by Katherine Steyer, illustrated by Lynn Averill. So it would be great to run for president of the United States. 
if I ran for president, I'd hope the people of the United States would choose me for a very important job, the job of leading our country. And I'd hope to follow in the footsteps of past presidents, such as George Washington, our first president, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. I'd have to think carefully about my decision to run for president. I'd want to know how my family felt about it too. Then I'd ask myself, am I the best person for the job? Am I ready to work very, very, very hard for my country? Do lots of people believe in me and will they help me run for office? If I could answer yes to all those questions, then I'd declare my candidacy. That means I'd announce I was interested in the job of President of the United States. If I ran for president, I'd run a campaign to let voters learn all about me. People who thought I would be a good president would donate money or time to help. I'd hire people to work on my campaign too. Campaigns can make a candidate famous. Soon my name or face would appear on signs, buttons, bumper stickers, and t-shirts. I'd even star in television commercials. If I ran for president, I'd work with my political party. That's a group of people who share the same beliefs about how the country should be governed. They support candidates who uphold those ideals. The two major parties are the Democratic Party, their symbol is a donkey, and the Republican Party, their symbol is an elephant. There are other parties too, called third parties. But people besides me would want to be president. The Republican and Democrat parties must choose whom they'll support in the election. In some states like Iowa, the parties each hold meetings called caucuses, where members pick their favorite candidate. In most states, party members hold an election called a primary. Caucuses and primaries show which candidates are popular with voters and who might have the best chance of being elected president. The first primary is held in New Hampshire in the winter before the presidential election. But I'd have to bundle up. In the summer before the election, the political parties announce their candidate for president. The major parties make this announcement at meetings called conventions. Each state sends delegates to the convention. Delegates vote for the candidate who is the most popular in their state. A convention looks like a big celebration full of cheering and chanting, balloons and confetti. Millions of Americans watch the excitement on TV. By the time of the convention, everyone usually knows which candidate will be chosen, but the delegates still hold the vote. If my party chose me to run for president, I'd make a speech to get everyone excited about helping me win. I'd tell the American people about my platform, my plans and ideas for our country. My running mate would make a speech too. That's the person who'd be my vice president if I became president. Remember we talked about Senator Dole running as vice president along with President Ford in 1976. If I ran for president, I'd be invited to debate with other presidential candidates. A person called a moderator would ask us questions. People across the country would listen carefully to our answers. Everybody's watching at home, on their couch, and even at the hospital. Reporters would ask me questions too, about my life, my family, even my kitten, Sassy. They'd print old photographs of me in newspapers and magazines, like the snapshot of me in my superhero costume, or my baby picture when I still wore diapers. If I ran for president, I would travel the country to meet lots of people. I'd have my own campaign bus or airplane to take me from place to place. Inside, there'd be comfy seats, perfect for checking out the news, writing speeches, and thinking about how to solve the nation's problems. I'd take naps too. I'd need the extra rest. I'd work hard and be very busy. All in one week, I might share cereal with kindergartners in California or crunch corn with can farmers in Kansas. 
and have dinner in Delaware where I'd order the blue plate special with apple pie and a large strawberry milkshake. After all that food, I might not feel too well. Still, I'd have to smile and talk with the people I meet. Presidential candidates make lots of speeches too, shake hands, and cuddle with babies. Finally, in November, election day would arrive. If I ran for president, I'd be nervous and excited. On election day, millions of voters from across the country go to their polling places to cast their ballots. That's another way to say that they vote. And remember how many states we have? 50, 50 states. Remember, there's 50 bright stars on our flag. In our country, people vote in private. No one but you knows how you voted, but I knew I'd choose my favorite candidate, me. It looks like he's got a sticker on him too. Once the voting is finished, officials count up the ballots. Then comes the announcement on television, radio, the newspapers, and on the internet. People everywhere find out who the next president of the United States will be. I'd stay up late and keep my fingers crossed. If I ran for president and lost, the people who worked so hard on my campaign would be disappointed. I'd be disappointed too. Still, I'd be proud that I'd taken part in a free and fair election. I'd make a telephone call to offer my best wishes and my support to the winner, our next president. But if I won, wow. On January 20th, I'd say the words of the oath of office and be sworn in as president. On that day, my inauguration day, there'd be a parade and a fancy ball. Then I'd move into the White House in Washington, D.C. to begin my four-year term as president of the United States of America. And what would I do when I became president? Well, that's another story. So thanks for reading that book with me, If I Ran for President. It up, brought up a lot of great uh, campaign strategies of uh, talking with people and taking pictures and holding babies and putting campaign buttons on. And it was also talking about the election of the President of the United States of America, which is how many years long? The campaign is a year or two, but they are elected for four years. And how many is United States representative, like in the House of Representatives? Remember, it's, um, on one hand, two. So if we have representatives, two, a president is four, how many would a senator be? Six. Very good. And so now I want to talk about Senator Dole and all of his cool campaigns. And so uh, I'm going to actually let Senator Dole speak for himself. And I'm going to be showing a video about his very first run for Congress in 1960 in the House of Representatives race. And at the very beginning of this video, uh, it is showing two future presidents. So don't you see if you can guess who those future presidents are in this video clip, okay? Hold on just a second. Let me get this here. And here we go. The candidates need no introduction. The Republican candidate, Vice President Richard M. Nixon. Let me get this And the Democratic here. candidate, Senator John F. And Kennedy. According to rules set by the candidate. 1960 was the year television began to play an important role in American elections. The candidates need no introduction. The Republican Some say Nixon's Vice TV President image in those first televised debates cost him Senator the president. John F. Kennedy. All I know is his polish in front of the camera was light years ahead of a young man who began to play an important role in American elections. The candidates need no introduction. It is a fact. The great pleasure say Nixon's TV image in those first televised debates cost him the president.
this will work again sorry for that and let's try to pull this up again let's see how this goes all right let's do this Republican candidate, Vice President Richard M. Nixon, and the Democratic Let's candidate, Senator John goes. F. Kennedy. According to rules set by the candidate... 1960 was the year television began to play an important role in American elections. Nominated by it. And it is a fact that... Some candidate, say Nixon's Vice TV President image Richard in those Nixon, first televised... And the Democratic Let's candidate, Senator John goes. F. Kennedy. All right. Well, I guess that isn't working as I intended. <laughs> But it is a four minute video uh, that we actually have right here in the exhibit case. And I apologize for that not working. I'll try to do it at the end. Uh, but it's going to be talking about some stories that I did want to recap with you here. And uh, so, first, let me switch around so you can actually see these things that we've been discussing. And what do we observe here? It looks like we have some sort of can. And we got a skirt and a tie. Do you see that here? Hmm, so all these are from 1960 and those ladies, they're all dolls for Dole. They wore these poodle skirts and they sang songs and they handed out Dole pineapple juice wherever they went. Why would they do that? And one of the most famous dolls for Dole was Senator Bob Dole's daughter, Robin. And you can see her about eight years old. And uh, her skirt says, I'm for daddy, watch the elephant go in 60. And so we're talking about the why they're handing out Dole pineapple juice everywhere. Well, in that race, there was three men going for this House uh, of Representatives race. And we had Senator, sorry, we had a young Bob Dole. We had Keith Sebelius, who you may know of, of uh, the Sebelius family. Uh, his daughter, sorry, his daughter-in-law is Kathleen Sebelius, who is former governor of Kansas and also a former Secretary of Health and Human Services under the Obama administration. So this is her father-in-law. And then we also have a man named Philip Doyle. So Dole and Doyle, they sound similar. And in order for Dole to distinguish himself in this campaign, he handed out pineapple juice wherever he went. So people remembered his name as Dole, as in the pineapple juice. And uh, it helped get him elected. And so we have Dollars for Dole, we have pineapple juice, and Keith Sebelius has this famous quote saying, you drown me in pineapple juice. And also this first campaign cost less than $20,000, which may seem like a lot of money, but compared to today's campaigns and television ads uh, and print advertisements, just like we read in that book, If I Ran for President, that all costs a lot of money. And so $20,000 uh, doesn't sound like that much right now. <laughs> and I also want to show you some election objects and uh, some other pictures, too. And so I'm going to flip you around here and look at these posters. Because these are some posters that were actually used for Dole's campaign. For instance, that top left, it says Ford for Dole, 1976. Uh, Dole was a vice presidential candidate along with President Ford. And Dole for president, Dole Kemp, 1996. And this lovely picture of everybody looking happy and Dole saying, people are my strength. Some other objects that I pulled from the archive are stickers. Can you imagine handing out that entire roll of stickers? <laughs> so we have those in the archive. And a uh, coffee cup, it says Bob Dole for president. 
we have bobbed over Congress here, and this is a quite old object. And what kind of animal is on the top of that there? Looks like an elephant. And which party mascot is that for? Remember, it starts with an R. Senator Dole is one of these. A Republican, very good. So elephants are Republicans. And what animal is the Democrats again? Donkeys. So here we have a GOP, that means Grand Old Party Republican, Bob Dole for Congress. And then a TV tray. Can you imagine snuggling up on your couch, eating your TV dinner on this TV tray? It actually has legs on the bottom so you can sit on the couch and eat your dinner. Looking at Dole for president. Some other photos I want to share with you are some, kind of some of them silly campaign photos. But here we are with those dolls for Dole. And we got the pineapple juice there. And they can wear those hats and hand out lots of campaign buttons. Here's another one. This is a sign that goes on the side of the road. It says, you're kind of Kansan. Everybody should vote for Bob Dole. And here we are at a rally or a uh, election night party. And you see Dole in the middle there smiling. It's like he won another campaign here for U.S. Senate. And then this silly picture to keep going on with the dole pineapple uh, tactic. Here are dole bananas. And they say, bananas about dole, dole's bunch. The time is ripe for dole, and dole has lots of appeal. <laughs> Here's President uh, Ford 1976 campaign. That is Dole campaigning for vice president. And then here we are, 1996, and this is Bob and Elizabeth working in the campaign office. We have lots of posters in the background, and Bob and Elizabeth are sitting at the front table there answering phones. Looks like Senator Dole is just getting off the phone and uh, putting that phone down on the table. And so with all this talk about campaigning, I want you to make some campaign posters. And so we have some examples of buttons. So buttons are pretty easy to make. They're just circles and you put them on with a safety pin. And uh, here are some examples. Run, Bob, run. Dole in 88. Tic Tac Dole. Uh, Remember in 1988, they wanted Bob and Elizabeth to run together as president and vice president. And then we saw some of those posters. I had some more ideas for you. Uh, so for these posters, we want to think about, um, you know, for instance, if you do this for student council, do you vote in student council? Do you see posters around the school? Do you want to support your friends, your favorite candidate? Uh, think about what they stand for and what uh, ideals they're talking about of if they're gonna make some change of we're gonna make school lunch even better or let's go up and pick up all the trash outside to make our school even cleaner uh, remember last week we talked about Earth Day and so you could also make a poster about you know cleaning up the pollution save the whales but here are my examples and my first one is talking about leader to the dog we've learned about already uh, says every country needs a leader. Says vote for the leader Dole. It's pretty cute with his little suit on there. <laughs> and then also we talked about leader Dole. We learned about Socks the cat, who was Clinton's cat. And Socks says it would be a catastrophe if you didn't vote. Vote for Socks. Now remember, we had our paw poll. You can either vote for leader the dog or Socks the cat. So just think about who you want to vote for. <laughs> I like leaders. Uh, we also have some other examples of posters would be uh, even Superman takes time to vote. And also got some frozen love in here. 
Olaf says, some people are worth voting for. Olaf. I think I've seen some campaigns of Olaf going for president, so that's pretty exciting. <laughs> so sorry I can't get that video to work. I think there's a little bit of reverberation going on. Uh, I will try to uh, get it up after this. I'll post it in the Facebook comments. You can uh, see it there. It also is on YouTube. But uh, next time we're going to be celebrating Kansas Day. And Kansas Day is usually celebrated on January 29th. But we're going to be celebrating it April 29th because <laughs> that just happens to be this Wednesday. So be sure to tune in and check us out there. We're going to be learning about uh, things from the adult archives of Kansas postcards and talking about Kansas symbols. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today. And we'll see you next time. See ya. and the Democratic candidate, Senator John F. Kennedy. According to rules set by the candidate... 1960 was the year television began to play an important role in American elections. Dominated by it. And it is a fact that through... Some say Nixon's TV image in those first televised debates cost him the presidency. All I know is his polish in front of the camera was light years ahead of a young man running for his first national office in Midwestern farm country. It's a great pleasure for me to speak to you at this meeting. I hope to be seeing all of you again in person before Election Day. And again, I ask for your support in my campaign. You have my thanks for your efforts on my behalf in the primary. The primary was a real race that year. In those days, most of the voters in western Kansas were Republicans like myself. Went Smith, a longtime incumbent, had retired, and the frontrunner was an ex-commander of the American Legion of Norton, Kansas, named Keith Sebelius. Keith was a tough candidate. But there was also a third candidate, a state senator, by the name of Phil Doyle. People around Russell knew me pretty well after eight years as county attorney, but for someone who wasn't exactly a household word in the other 25 counties in the huge 6th district, Dole Doyle, well, that kind of confusion could cost a fellow votes. Trouble was, I was running my campaign out of the basement of our home in Russell. Even though I took out a mortgage and spent almost $20,000, it was a few years down the road before I could get a TV endorsement like this. We have worked together side by side in the United States Senate for 14 years. I consider him irreplaceable. Somehow I had to stand out from the three-way crowd. I had to let people know Bob Dole was running. Will everyone here kindly step to the rear and let a winner lead Well, just like the, the celebrity way. shows on radio and television, I came up with my own theme song. And later on when I ran for the Senate, I had Marilyn May sing a Broadway show tune with special lyrics. But for now, it was the Bobolinks, four young ladies singing barbershop harmony with the ukulele. They wore red felt skirts and blue elephants sewn by my wife Phyllis. My female supporters became Dolls for Dole. Vote for the man who stands above all the rest. He'll pass every test. It's Bob Dole, cause he's the best. But the real doll in my eyes was my daughter Robin, whose outfits offered a special appeal to voters. With more enthusiasm than campaign cool, we slapped our slogan, Roll the Dole, on the wheels of a mock-covered wagon. And anything else had moved. In January 1960, we took Topeka's usually quiet Kansas Statehood Day celebration by storm. Step up to the pole, cast your vote for Bob Dole, and let a winner lead the way. We 
weekends at spring, we canvassed every main street from Colby to Ellsworth to Hoxie. While the Dolls for Dole served our trademark pineapple juice, I went off in search of voters, and not just on Main Street either. The open convertible and big parades came later. I must have put 40,000 miles on my car. If I saw a farmhouse light burning, I took it as an invitation to drop by and make my case. The election results at first appeared to be a dead heat until the next day when Russell County, of all places, my home county, realized that the totals for Dole and Doyle had been transposed. Turned out I won by a shaky 984 votes. I had to agree with my opponent Keith Sebelius when he conceded, you drowned me in pineapple juice. To be honest, I never did get comfortable with all the focus groups and spin doctors of later campaigns. I always preferred looking into the eyes of a voter rather than a TV camera. Call it old-fashioned, but in Kansas, we like our contacts to be personal and our politics to be authentic.